Lent. And uh, I'll just try to give the background uh, from where did it evolve. So we need to understand first, Lent is a tradition which has evolved from Catholicism. Okay, so Lent, uh, so the concept of tradition comes from the law. Law was given by God to Moses, but the traditions are the innovations of man with different motives. So man tend to try to uh, think saying that I will do beyond what God has given and they try to come with some innovative ideas and they think that they can elevate the glory of God but they tend to suppress the glory and honor of God. So we need to be very careful while we are dealing with the traditions. Uh, one such example is Lent. So as I said, so Lent is a tradition followed by Catholics. So this has evolved over a period of 4th century by following certain um, scriptures from the Old Covenant. So, until 4th century, the concept of Lent never existed. Neither apostles nor the 1st century fathers or elders who planted the church did not follow this Lent. So we need to understand this is coming as a tradition out of the man, not from the God. Not even in the Old Testament or even in the New Testament, Anything is spoken about Lent and the Bible is instructing people to follow this tradition as Lent. Okay, so the primary purpose of Lent is to remind the people, Catholics, about the repentance. Okay, so the concept of Lent came primarily to remind them of the repentance which is needed for the life what they tend to live. So in trying to do this, they created a concept of Lent which became very dangerous and I would call this anything coming out of Catholicism is very very dangerous, very deceptive religion because they are very close to the doctrines taught by the Lord Jesus Christ but in doing that they try to manipulate the gospel, they try to manipulate the grace of God as part of the human innovation. Okay, that's the first point. So the objective of the Lent is to remind them of their repentance. And the second point is, Lent is a period of fasting, self-denial, self-discipline or a tradition uh, which is followed by Catholics and some Protestants. Okay, so it is a period of fasting, it is a period of self-denial, sacrificing something in the form of food or smoking or drinking or TV or telling lies or something which is the weakness which is within them, some form of sin or any habit which they want to sacrifice as part of this fasting. So uh, these are the themes actually when you speak about Lent. And then it begins on Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday which is 46 days. Leaving out Sunday it is 40 days. Okay. So if you take out the Sundays it is 40 days. So it is a period of 6 weeks. Okay. So you may have a question what is why this Ash Wednesday has come. But if you see, these people, the ca uh, Catholics, when they brought this concept of Lent in the 4th century, they picked the scriptures from the Old Testament. So let us see Esther 4.1. Okay. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city wailing loudly and bitterly. So taking this concept of the ash where they tend to they tend to rub the entire ash onto their faces as part of this uh, tradition when they follow they tend to push put this ashes on their faces. We can even see one more scriptures in Jeremiah 626 put on sackcloth my people and rolls in ashes Mourn with bitter wailing, as far as only son. 
for suddenly the destroyer will come upon us. So the bottom line, what uh, they tend to do is, this is a form of repentance as part of the Old Covenant. Even if you see Daniel in 9, Daniel 9, while he is praying for the people of Israel, when they were in the, the exile of uh, Babylon, Daniel tend to pray by putting ashes on his face and putting the sackcloth, he is praying. So the Old Testament concept of repentance is when you put uh, sackcloth and ashes, that is how you tend to come to repentance. So that is how a tradition they used to follow. So the same practice is being taken by these people uh, as part of the Lent, as part of this Lent period of six weeks. Okay. So as I said, this has come in fourth century. So while I say this, I want everyone to have a clear understanding. As I said, the Lent has not evolved from Bible, nor from the Old Covenant, nor from the New Covenant, nor Jesus indicated it that we need to follow. So these people, Catholics, they took it from the example of Lord Jesus Christ as part of his wilderness for 40 days. So taking that theme into consideration as if Jesus sacrifice, Jesus wilderness of 40 days was not sufficient that they came out with the innovation of they sacrificing some form of the habit as if the sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ was not sufficient. So we need to be very clear when we are following some traditions that we are not dishonoring and the tradition is not contradicting any doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ and the New Covenant. Now, I will give you three to four examples from the scriptures very clearly contradicting the concept of Lent very clearly. Okay? <clears throat> now that we are in the New Covenant, we are totally under the doctrine of grace. So we do not want we do not want to call this as Lent period, but we want to call it as a meditation on cross and Christ. So my attempt for next 15 minutes will be all of us out here, it is have a clear understanding and the conscience in our heart and mind is very clear. But we want everyone as part of the Reformation Church and everyone sitting out to have a clear understanding about this Lent period and we not fall into the concept of this tradition of the Lent and we dishonor God. But let us try to understand very clearly how this Lent is con contradicting the grace of God. How this Lent is contradicting the sacrifice made by Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, uh, if you see Romans 5.17. Okay. Remember we are in grace the moment we believe in Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that we cannot earn grace nor we deserve it. So how are we telling that by giving uh, something out of our life during this period we tend to get some spiritual blessing. So this is the belief which is there as part of the Catholicism when they innovated this in 4th, 5th century saying that by sacrificing some habit by sacrificing something, they tend to get God's blessing. So that was the mindset of the people when they started this, uh, this Lent. So they tend to believe that by putting the ashes on their faces, by wearing the sack clothes, and by sacrificing something out of their life during the period of six weeks as a mark of fasting for the Lent, and their thinking is, they are going to get the God's blessing. Okay? So, but then we need to understand very clearly that Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient and we don't need any more sacrifices from us in order to gain God's blessing. We see in Hebrew 10.1 The law is only a shadow of good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, it says, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly, year after the year, make perfect those who draw near to worship.
So the scripture is very clearly telling, and I also told you that the traditions have evolved from the law. Law was given from the God and the tradition from the man. And the Hebrew 10 one is very clearly saying that from law, no one is made perfect. When the tradition is evolving from the law, how can the tradition make the people perfect by offering some form of the sac sacrifice, either it is ash, sackcloth, or some sacrifice made on the habits, which we tend to give. Maybe it is alcohol, maybe it is movies, maybe it is TV, maybe it is social networking. How it is helping you when Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient for you? Okay? So, this is a pure, pure contradiction in the mindset of the Catholics where they tend to think, if I sacrifice something from my side, it will be a spiritual blessing, but Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient in order for us to get God's blessing. Okay? That's point number one. Second, fasting. The theme of the Lent is fasting. And the concept of the Old, Old Testament and Old Covenant is to put ashes and sackcloths. We are in the New Covenant and we don't need to put any ashes or sackcloths on our face. Because Bible very clearly told how we need to do the fasting. Let us see how the fasting has to be made in the New Testament. When you fast, do not look sober as the hypocrites, uh, as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are on a fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will be rewarded for you. So the concept of Lent is fasting, right? Which is coming as a tradition. But Bible has very clearly dictated us how do we need to do the fasting? Do we need to put ashes? Do we need to put sackcloths? The scripture is very clearly telling when you are on a fasting, do it in private. The moment you do fasting in public, you have already received your reward on the earth. You don't have any reward in the heaven is the first point. And the scripture also is telling you need to look fresh. You cannot look sober. You cannot look sober when others look at you that you are doing a fasting. Don't make it as a public event when you are fasting. It is a privacy time between you and the Father who is unseen and that is how you are supposed to do the fasting but not by putting ashes and sackcloths you tend to fast and making a public announcement of your fasting that you lose your reward. So is there a contradiction? Do you see the contradiction of the Lent when you follow the theme of the fasting as part of this Lent? It is totally contradicting to the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw the concept of the sacrifice, what the Catholics are doing in order to get God's blessing, yeah, totally to the contrary for the sacrifice made by the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the same time, the teaching word Lord Jesus Christ made in terms of the fasting. Totally contradiction. Next, the third point. The people mindset from the Lent is as a mark of remembrance of the sin. Okay? But that is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit, guys. The Holy Spirit is given to us that the Holy Spirit reminds us of all the sin in our day-to-day -day life and we are supposed to repent daily, not during these 40 days. You are supposed to repent small r, which is a daily practice, which is a daily repentance, which is daily conviction, not the 40 days. That anything what you tend to do through the mind is of the flesh and anything what you tend to do by the Spirit you are under the grace. You are not following or you are not being obedient to any God's laws by your flesh, but by the Spirit. You are supposed to be led by the Spirit, walk in the Spirit as spoken in Galatians 5, as well as it is the work of the Holy Spirit.
to convict of the sin so that you can repent, not that you want to dedicate a 40-day period as a mark of remembrance of the repentance that you need to do from your mind, which is through the flesh. Do you see the contradiction again in terms of the practice as part of the Lent? Do you see how dangerous the concept of Lent is where it is totally deceiving the new covenant? It is totally deceiving the concepts and the doctrine of the law of God spoken in the new covenant by our Lord Jesus Christ. When he comes, who comes? The Holy Spirit. He will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and the righteousness and the judgment. So it is the work of the Holy Spirit to remind us of our sin so that we are on the righteous path and we are on the just path. So you doesn't need to put a effort through the flesh in your mind saying that during this period of 40 days I will remember all the sins and I will repent by wearing ashes and sackcloths as a mark of repentance. So let us see Galatians 5.25. This Galatians 5.25 is entirely as I told uh, as part of my sermon also. You need to read the entire Galatians book in order to understand the law and grace. I would request each one of you to read at least 10 times the entire Galatians chapter for 10 times if you read. Slowly meditating upon it, you will understand the elevation of grace and you will see the elevation of the Spirit of God rather than the law. So we see here, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Means everything what you tend to do, you need to be under the control of the grace of God. The moment you are under the grace of God, you will live by the Spirit. You will not walk by the flesh. So you see here again the contradiction with the Lent where their mindset is to dedicate and call it as a Lent and uh, fast by sacrificing and Lent as a period of remembrance of the sin. But it is not the work of the mind of a man but it is the work of the Holy Spirit when you are led by the Spirit when you are under the grace of God, when you believe the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will walk in the Spirit. You will be led by the Spirit and the Holy Spirit will convict you of your daily sin so that you have your daily repentance. So, and one more thing, the daily repentance is not during only 40 days. The life of a believer is a daily repentance, daily repentance. You, I will show you through the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 31. What Paul is telling here, I face death every day. Yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, the life of a believer is not limited to the 40 days of repentance, but it is a life of a believer where you tend to repent of your sins daily. Even, let us see next scripture, Colossians 2, 16 and 17. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink with regards to religious festival, a new moon, a celebration or a Sabbath day. Actually, if you see uh, a different version, you will see in, instead of a religious festival, it is called as Holy Days. We call Lent as a holiday. We call Easter as a holiday. We call Good Friday as a holiday. But is it true? Where does, where does it tell in the Bible that Good Friday is a holiday? Where does in the Bible say Lent day is a holiday? No. It is not. The scripture is very clearly telling as I said, let no one judge you based on what you eat, what you drink, what you call it as a holy day, what you call it as a new moon day or a Sabbath. These are the shadow of the things they were to come, that were to come, the reality however is found in Christ Jesus. So guys, Lent is not the theme of our reflection during these 40 days as part of the church. It is in Christ 
we are meditating on the cross. It is an opportunity to take the 40 days where we want to reflect on the word of God, to reflect on the sacrifice made by our Lord Jesus Christ. The theme of we gathering, let us forget about the world when they are gathering, but let us remember we not fall into the tradition and we deceive and dishonor our Lord Jesus Christ, His grace, His sacrifice, His death and resurrection. We need to understand, we need to unlearn everything. I know there are a lot of people here <coughs> with the Catholic background. I, I want everyone to ponder upon what I am speaking from the scriptures. You need to clean your mindset. You need to cleanse from your heart the concept of Lent. You please come out of it. Your conscience need to be very clear. The understanding need to be very clear. It is not Lent. You don't need to follow the Lent. It is a time of meditation on cross. So even as I said, this has come in the 5th century. My, my closing conversations, this has come in 5th century. Until that time, it was never there. The Bible doesn't teach it. The early fathers did not teach it. The apostles did not teach it. Then why are we following the Lent? Why is the world following? 1.5 billion people tend to follow the Lent during this period. And now you understand, looking at all the contradictions which are there in the Lent, as, as we have seen three to four examples, how the entire world, how these entire Catholics are dishonoring the grace of God, dishonoring the sacrifice made by our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is not the Lent day, it is not the Good Friday, it is the death and resurrection which we are supposed to follow. That is how we tend to follow as part of the Lord's Supper. That is the institution, that is the ordinance which God has given before His ascension. Jesus told us to remind His death and resurrection as part of the Lord's Supper which we tend to do as part of our Sunday service. You call it as holy, but not the Lent day, not the Easter, not the Christmas. Nothing guys, this is coming from the pagan paganism as a tradition. Tradition, if it is not aligned to the scripture, it is a deception. I want everyone to understand. And last scriptures, you can see how <coughs> dangerous the traditions are from the mouth of Jesus himself. Okay? These are the words of Jesus. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. The human rules are nothing but traditions. What is a tradition? Tradition has come out of the human rules. You have let go of the commandments of God and are holding on to your human traditions. One more scripture from Matthew. Jesus replied, this is the context of the conversation between Jesus and the Pharisees. Jesus replied, and why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? So, are you seeing how tradition, if it is not aligned to the scripture, if it is not aligned to the scripture, how dangerous it is. So, let us, when we gather at church, not deceive ourselves, but have a clear mindset, clearance from our mind, clearance from our heart. Let our conscience be very clear. Unlearn everything what was there till now for whatever period you have been following Catholicism. But understand that you can use this as an opportunity to meditate on the cross, to spend time in fellowship, to spend time in uh, exhorting God's name. Yes, you can yes, you can sacrifice something. You can you, you can leave something, your food or non veg or anything, but your mindset, but your conscience should be very clearly saying that your sacrifice is not needed. You can do as a health improvisation, you can do as a fasting what is told in the Bible, but not that Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient that you have to offer some sacrifice. As part of your physical body, you want to discipline something, you can do that. But Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient. The God's grace is sufficient that you doesn't need to follow the Lent as a tradition. 
but use it as an opportunity to encourage one another and meditate on the cross.